let's take a look at how to navigate around with navigation agents and a navigation region. So to start off with, to show you guys here, we can see I'm just using a basic Note 2D as my background here or for the world. Um, I'm using a sprite that she with those random numbers. That's just my background image that I'm using here. I didn't feel like actually building on any levels. So I just went and grabbed this image off of Google. And then I have my character here and I'm using a rigid body 2D for this with the gravity scale inside of the inspector set to zero. And we can see inside of this rigid body, we just have a sprite 2D so I can view my character. And it has a collision shape and we have a navigation agent 2D attached to that and attached to that or with that navigation agent 2d we are connecting a signal as you can see right here and the signal we are connecting is velocity computed so we're going to connect that signal to our character here and we have a navigation region 2d all right so let's go ahead and take a look at how to first set up our little navigation all right, so to create our navigation here, we're just going to go ahead and select navigation region. We're going to hit the, you're going to see a green, blue, and red button up top here. And we're just going to select the green option and that'll allow us to place our points around on the map. And as you see, we can go ahead. All we have to do is just click our little points. And this is going to work as basically our little outline of where our character would be able to walk. Now, since our character is down at the bottom here, He's not going to be able to walk up here, even though we have this navigation mesh, because there's no connection for him to get there. But I just want to show you that's how you do that. If you select the blue option, you can grab the points and move them around and make any little adjustments you like. And if you select the red option and you click, you can remove points altogether. All right, so now we have that. Let's go ahead and jump into the actual scripting. All right, so on my main script here, uh, I'm just getting the my or sorry, when I left click on the screen, I'm just getting the position that I clicked at and I'm sending that to my character with a custom function called set destination, which we'll get into just here in a sec. Now with this, I'm going to go ahead and show you both versions of this. So if you're using C sharp and you're curious, I'll show you. The ver I'll show you rewritten that way. And if you're using GD script, I'll show you rewritten that way. And I'm going to have both codes up on the screen split, hopefully down the middle list. All right. So we have both codes up here on the screen. I just come up a little bit. Um, in a second, uh, fine. Close enough. Okay. So at the top, you can see uh, we're creating a vector two for our destination. And of course, we're doing this in both scripts. So it doesn't really matter which one I'm, I'm focusing on, but we're going, we're creating a destination. And that's just a vector two. We're creating a constant integer uh, for our speed. Uh, for me, I'm using 500 that you saw in that, in the demo in the beginning. Maybe you want it faster, maybe you want it slower. All right, so I'm just going to scroll down on there so we can actually see more of the bottom. All right, so we're going to go ahead and create a new function called set destination. And really that should be renamed, but we're creating doing set destination for a new function. That's going to take an argument that is a vector two. This argument is going to be called new destination. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our destination variable equal to our new destination. So remember when I said that I, when I left clicked, I passed in the mouse position right where, right where I uh, clicked. And that's what we're passing in here. And that's basically going to get that vector two of where I clicked. And that's going to be set as the destination of where our little trooper, if this was an RTS, is going to move around. All right, next we go ahead and we get our navigation agent 2D node. And we're going to get the target position of that. And we're going to set that equal to our destination. Now in GD script there, you see, we can just simply call set target position. Otherwise, 
you can just access the target position uh, property on it and just set it equal to the destination like we're doing in C-sharp. Either way, it doesn't really matter, both accomplishing the same thing. Next, something that's exclusive to Richard Bodies here is a function that we have to override in C-sharp called integrated forces. And that has an argument of state. Obviously, you can name this whatever you want. But as you see on the C-sharp side, this is a physics direct body state. 2D specifically because we're working in 2D here. Now, I'll say if you're working in 3D, this whole process is working the exact same. You're just working with obviously 3D, the 3D versions of these nodes instead of 2D, and you're using vector 3s instead of vector 2s, and you'll have to get the position of where you're clicking, which is a completely different setup for that. But anyway, uh, instead of our integrated forces function here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to check if and we're going to get our navigation agent 2D and we're going to check is target reachable. So we're basically saying wherever we clicked, if there is a navigation path that is available to us, and then we're going to tell it to move. Else, we go into our else block here and we just set our linear velocity to zero, zero. So basically we're not going to move at all. All right, so to do this, we're gonna get a create a variable called target, and we're gonna set that to our navigation agent 2D, and we're gonna get the next path position. So this is basically gonna get the next point on our path. And then we're gonna create our, or set our velocity rather. So we create a variable called velocity. We're using our position, and we're getting the direction to our target. And then we're going to normalize that vector and multiply it by our speed. And the last thing we do inside of our if block here is we set the velocity to the velocity we just calculated there. And then all that's left is that signal that we connected for our navigation agent 2D. And the only thing we do there is we set our linear velocity equal to that safe velocity argument that gets passed in. That's all we're doing there. And just like that, it doesn't matter if you're using the C-sharp version or the GD script version. We can now click around on our map and our character can walk around only within uh, our field. So I just come up here and just run this real quick. You can see it's pop up here on the screen or at least should there we go so if i click up top here even though we have navigation our character can't move up there because there's remember no connection between the two but if we go ahead and click anywhere here say over on this bridge our character is going to navigate around and get a path all the way over there uh, say you want to go maybe all the way up here now and you see we can stop midway uh during a path if we click somewhere they can't reach our character is just going to stop instantly so if you want to do this like an rts you would just get all of your selected units and you would call this, uh, what do we call it? Set destination, uh, essentially on all of them. So if we were to take our character here real quick, just gonna come up here and just see if we grab them and put them up here and we rerun that real quick. You see our characters up here and we can move around. And remember up here because we deleted that point up there. It's a little awkward. We can't get up there, but we can get up into this little corner here that we set up. All right. So there's navigation. There's how you can set that, set up your point and click kind of style for as you can use for your RTS setup using the navigation region as well as the navigation agent. Now, from what I understand, if you have an object or a character or whatever in this moving around, um, to my understanding, you should just be able to add the uh, navigation obstacle 2D node onto that item and your character should uh, just avoid or should be able to calculate going around it on its own. Now, I say should, I haven't 
tested a whole lot with that and I was having a weird little issue. I don't know, that could just be a bug uh, with the specific version that I'm using here, but there you go. There's your navigation. You've got the code for both GD script and C sharp. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.